All right, uh, Smith & Wesson wood revolver grips. That's what we're going to talk about, uh, some of the old vintage ones here. As you guys know, if you've been around my channel, you know I'm a big revolver fan. So definitely going to go over some of these grips. Um, I don't know everything about them, but I do know a couple of things. Um, I do know they're very expensive now, and they're very hard to get. Uh, there's a difference between some of the older vintage ones and some of the newer production ones and uh, ones that come out of uh, like Thailand so there's a lot of uh, different variations of them out there so these here you can see these are stocks off of a uh, the big end frame with the uh, square the square butt on it the square frame on the bottom as so to speak so they're really nicely made um, they're either walnut or Goncal Alves um, type wood some of them are Coco Bolo but I believe what I have here is mostly um, going to be walnut or Goncala Alves. I'm not sure exactly. I'm not much of a wood expert, so I can't tell the difference. But I, uh, I do know that that is, that is some of the uh, woods they were using, the most common that you're going to find. So these ones here, you can see they've darkened up a bit. Uh, they're a little older, and uh, they since then have gotten a nice uh, you know, lacquer job on them. But... Uh, what things that happen is the uh, the medallions seem to corrode and um, turn basically like this. If you look at this one, the uh, medallions kind of get a little tarnished and flaky. So these ones here are the uh, J-frame grips. These are for the little uh, revolver. I'll go ahead and show you without dropping that on the ground. So one of the things they did, and I'll go ahead and show it to you. All right, so the difference uh, that they started later coming out, if you notice these older ones, there's a real deep cut right around it, and the checkering is real nice and sharp. Um, I believe this was like machined, definitely machined of some sort. And Smith & Wesson has since then offered the grips again. Um, these are off of like their uh, new model series, their classic line series, so to say. So they've been re-offering these. But if you look carefully on them, this is seems to be rolled on or uh, pressure pressed or something. That, this is definitely not machined. So it's just a stamp. And the density of the wood it seems to be a lot different. It seems to be almost uh, like a fake almost. Um, you can really see the, di the differences. I mean, of course, the size differences not what we're looking at, but the wood and everything, it just seems cheaper. You know, it's really cool that they're still offering the wood grips with their classic line revolvers. Definitely, we don't want to knock Smith & Wesson for that. Uh, we're, I'm really glad that they re-offered a lot of their classic revolvers because it gives guys like me a chance to try to get them. And I, I'm still trying to get a couple of them right now. But they're hard to get. But they, their grips, I must say, I wish they would have done a little bit more work to these in offering them. They're just not, they're not quite what I uh, would have liked. The next thing on the, especially on the Magnum grips or the, uh, the, the big end frame grips, you'll see. Now these ones here, these are out of uh, Thailand. These are uh, knockoff um, knockoffs basically so they're you can see too they're a little bit smaller they're different i mean but they did machine they, they do a good job they did machine it uh, the the checkering is exactly like those the relief cut is a little different uh the medallion is uh the gold and it seems to hold up pretty good um the backs are a little bit different i think the uh well, the Smith & Wesson. Some of the Smith & Wessons have a, um, if I have one out here, yeah, here. Some of them have this uh, metal button that helps hold the medallion in. So these ones here seem to be just swedged in or whatnot. But these are genuine Smith & Wesson Target factory grips. These ones here are the, the knockoffs. And a very good knockoff, if, uh, if I might say so myself. A very good copy and I'll show you a, another example of those 
Um, the other thing that you'll notice on these, none of these I have out on the table have what they call the diamond in the middle. Um, Smith & Wesson made a, a few of those. In a, that The diamond in the middle would set it back, back to uh, definitely early, early, early. I got here the case here, this is a model pre-10. This one was made in 1948. You can see the what I'm talking about, the uh, diamond in the center of the grip. And this is basically the same grip that they remanufacture, but it's not the same. It really isn't. Um, these, these grips are really interesting because I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera, but they have really nice color in them all through it. If you actually take a look at this gun. So it's kind of hard to pick it up through camera, but it's there. And it's something that, uh, you know, each grip is going to be special, and I'll get into that. Um, sometimes you'll get some of these grips, and they have really nice character in them. And I'll uh, sh pull out another one here, and I'll show it to you. These are the uh, grips off of the uh, uh, K-frame, basically. So it's still got the nice um, Magnum look to it. This is actually a Magnum, a 357. But if you look at the uh, the nice character in this in the wood here. You know, um, try to show it all to you, but it's it's a little hard. But there's really nice stripes and streaks going through it, especially this area right here. I really like this. Um, of course, this one has a little damage. It's the way I bought it, and it's got this circular cut. Now that's another thing that's different and has changed. I don't particularly personally like this. It's it's cool, but uh, you know I don't like the way it looks and sits. It makes everything else look real oblong to me. Um, I much would rather prefer the one with the, just the divot cut into it. And I'll show you those. But uh, yeah, you, this is just something that you lose in time. I tell you, they just don't make things like this anymore. They just you don't see this on revolvers much anymore. You know now. You know something like that in comparison to what they're they're producing now. You know, I mean, take a looking back at this. I mean, it's okay. You know, I'd rather have this than than definitely something that's rubber or you know composite on my revolver. So anyway, I'll go ahead and show you something else here. All right, so here you get a good uh, look at it. You can see this one's got this one's off of an end frame. This one's got that nice divot in it instead of the actual circular cutout, which I like and I'm not sure exactly the dates or the years and if uh, when they actually quit doing this and they moved over to circular cut. It seems to me that the really early guns from the 70s have this and the ones that were coming into the 80s were having the uh, circular cut um, much like uh, this one here. So. Now this is the um, the only pair I think on for the uh, big the big guy that I have that's a genuine Smith and Wesson factory grip for it, um, but really nice stocks on this one, really nice grips. All right, and now now this one here is a K frame. Now this is a smooth a smooth panel grip, so it doesn't have any checkering on it, but it does have the nice little divot that I like. Um, this again, you can. I, I know for sure this gun was originally purchased in the 70s, and so. And this was this was my dad's gun, so now I have it, and it's when he bought it. And these are the original grips he has on it. They're smooth, and they're the larger grips for this. Now this gun here, the K frame will accept the little stocks here but uh, I keep the the larger ones on there it's a lot more comfortable definitely but this one's a smooth it's a little darker and it's got the divot cut no diamond on the the center where the uh, screw is though All right so last but not least on the list well that's not the last one I lied to you but um, anyway this one here is uh, Thailand knockoffs again. 
They put a really large diamond in the middle, which is really cool. They put that nice uh, divot in there. And these come from Thailand. I bought these from Thailand uh, on eBay for $30. They have really nice character in the wood. You can see they even got the medallions right in there. Okay. And I'll hopefully you can see the character in the wood in the back there without the glare coming through. But really beautiful stuff. And for the kind of money that you pay for it coming from there. And amazing. Even though they're knockoffs, they're really nice. Of course, uh, now the last grips. Uh, on the little, uh, the little gun, the little J-frame, we got the. Uh, these are like pearl type grips on there. I don't think they're they're not real. This is a synthetic pearl grips. They just dress it up a little nicer. This gun originally had the wood grips on it, which I may change back. But um, forget how or why I got these. You know what, in fact, I do remember. I was gonna buy a stainless version of this gun. Um, a stainless version and throw these grips on there. And uh, that deal never went through, so I got stuck with the grips. They cost me about 80 bucks for these things. And um, so I stuck them on this gun to see how they looked and I just never changed them back. But but they're pretty nice, it's kind of a another route you can take. Okay, and of course you can get the uh, Smith & Wesson catalog, which will go over all the types of grips. The old hand ejector grips, uh, the different variations. I don't know everything about them, but uh, this book will help you explain a little bit more. It'll go through some dates and things. And here's the, uh, the other ones. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was the bottom page here talks about it. The, uh, what they call the Coke bottle grips. If it'll come into focus here. All right. I don't know if you can read it, but they're talking about the Coke bottle grips, and that's the um, something I learned about by just by reading up on this stuff. The Coke bottle grips, how you can always identify them, um, is when you look at the grips straight on like this. The this part swells out, and it kind of gives the uh, old Coca-Cola bottle look. And that's what they're talking about. And those have since then come very collectible, very a little worth a lot of money. Um, there's companies that reproduce them. Uh, I think there's uh, like Keith Grips or Ropers and stuff. But those things, are, I mean, they charge so much money for those that you might as well buy original ones for that kind of money. Um, anyway, so uh, the biggest mistake from back in the day you know, people would get these old revolvers, and I, I know, they didn't know, you know, I mean, we do the same thing with our guns today, and now, you know, 30, 40 years from now, people are there collecting our stuff is going to say the same thing about us, but they would take their old wood stock grips off and toss them, you know, they would throw them away, or, or trade them, or sell them, or just throw them in a box and forget about them, and they would get lost, and they would stick rubber hoe grips or uh, Pac Meyer grips on them, and then that's it, and that's what happened to a lot of these Coke bottle grips. And now they're worth a lot of money. I mean, even these now, even these standard, like uh, go look up on uh, eBay and whatnot or Gun Broker and look up end frame uh, Smith & Wesson grips, just the, the grips. I've, I've Some of those I paid $100 for and that was a while ago. It could have gone up even more beyond that. So, yeah, so I, I just, uh, it, it blows my mind how expensive they've gotten. But uh, anyway, that's the grip video here for you. The Smith & Wesson uh, original wood, wood revolver grips. Hopefully it covered a little bit of some stuff and you walk away with some things, but I barely scratch the surface. But um, anyway, stay tuned. Uh, keep liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, we will be going over other ones. And next up is the Colt revolver grips. Oh yeah, and those get very expensive. Thanks for watching.